Um, I want to know, how do we know how many people died of COVID? 10,000. 1 million people have died. Around this time, four years ago, the U.S. was recording about 1,000 COVID deaths every day. And I remember watching those data trackers constantly because I was looking for an answer to a question that nobody had an answer to, which was, how bad is this going to get? And now the global death count from the World Health Organization sits at more than 7 million people. And the CDC says that nearly 1.2 million of those happened here in the U.S. So where did those numbers come from? And how well do they reflect reality? Those kinds of questions are what our little YouTube channel here is designed to answer. So thank you to Hank Green for the assignment and welcome to Howtown. Okay, this is the most direct way to track how people are dying. It's a death certificate. They look like this in Mexico and they look like this in Germany. They all have this section for cause of death. And that section has two parts. Part one is supposed to capture the chain of events that led to death, starting at the top with the immediate cause. So a common sequence during the pandemic was someone would die from acute respiratory distress, which was due to pneumonia, which was due to COVID-19. And that makes COVID the underlying cause of death. Part two is for contributing conditions. So these are things that would have lowered that person's chance of survival, but didn't set in motion the events that led to their death. In the US, if the CDC gets a death certificate with COVID-19 in either part one or part two of this document, they count that as a COVID death. And if you poke around in their data, you can figure out the exact breakdown, which looks like this. 86% had COVID listed as the underlying cause of death, that's part one, 14% with COVID as a contributing cause in part two. So that's the short answer. Our death count comes from more than a million individual judgments made by doctors and medical examiners and coroners all over the US. Those death certificates are flowing every day to state and local records offices and then to the National Center for Health Statistics at the CDC, which counts them up. It's a pretty good system. It's been in place for many decades, but it doesn't mean that the data is perfect. There's a new warning tonight. The US does not have enough coronavirus test kits to meet the current demand. Our testing was so constrained, and I don't think the general public understands how constrained we were. So I would see patients in the emergency room uh, from China uh, with fever and cough. But if they weren't from Wuhan, we couldn't test them. If they were from Wuhan and they had a cough but no fever, we couldn't test them. And so in those early days, we, we do believe that we were missing uh, COVID diagnoses and COVID deaths. I'm, I'm getting caught up on sort of how the vital registration system works in this country. And it, it's my understanding that we have maybe tens of thousands of different people who are responsible for certifying deaths. And so I'm wondering how likely is it that they were applying sort of different standards or definitions of what a COVID death was. Can it be very subjective or is there a really obvious way that COVID shows up when it is the underlying cause of death? You know, the, the, the epidemiology is changing so much over time. In 2020, and 2021. People would be at home in their usual state of health, whether that was healthy or having underlying chronic diseases like diabetes, heart disease, lung disease. And they would suddenly get sick and they would come in with COVID pneumonia. That's not the kind of patient that I'm seeing today. What I'm seeing is people who are really, really sick already, often with very little uh, quality of life or life left. A and so you don't really know how much, if at all, COVID is contributing sometimes. A positive COVID test is not required for COVID to be listed as a cause of death. And a positive test doesn't obligate doctors to list COVID here. This document represents their best medical judgment. And that can be tricky with the coronavirus because it doesn't just attack the lungs, it can also attack other organs and it can cause blood clots and strokes and heart attacks. And some of those cases can be harder calls to make. Is this person an asymptomatic COVID positive who happens to be having a heart attack, which is a very common condition? Or is this somebody where COVID caused a heart attack? And I think, you know, we don't have a way to figure that out. Sources say Trump and his aides have questioned whether the coronavirus death toll is being overcounted. You know, these death certifiers don't always have all the information they want. And it's a matter of, are you going to jump from that uncertainty to conspiracy or not? Based on how death certificates are being filled out, you can be certain the number is substantially lower than what we are being told. 
based on inaccurate, incomplete data, people are being terrorized by fear mongers into relinquishing cherished freedoms. Part of the reason I am interested is is that like it's easy it's easy to say here's the number, and then it's also easy to say that number's fake. Uh, because this is because here's a little bit of context about how we do this. Uh, but if you get like eight minutes of context, 12 minutes of context, uh, then suddenly you're like, oh, the world is complicated and a lot of people died of COVID. Fortunately, there is another method that doesn't rely on all of these individual judgments happening about the cause of death, and that's called excess mortality. The way it works is that you ignore the cause of death section and just count the death certificates, regardless of the cause. And by doing that, you can get a broader view of the pandemic's true death toll. Can you explain at the most basic level what an excess death is? Yes. So simply put, it's the number of deaths beyond what you would expect in a normal year. I've plotted here the deaths in the U.S. by year from any cause. And sort of right away, you see this jump in 2020, 2021. You want to know how many of those are excess deaths. Why can't you just compare them to the 2019 levels? So the reason why you can't just compare them to 2019 is that, as you see, there is a slight increase over time in, in how many people die in America. So you adjust a bit for that so you can go forward in time. And then you have your baseline. So you're basically saying this is the amount of deaths we think the U.S. would have seen if the pandemic didn't happen. And then the part that sticks out the top is the excess. And you compared this excess to the kind of reported COVID death count. What did you find there? Generally, what I found was that they tended to be pretty well matched, but there was more excess deaths than there were COVID deaths. And there was also more excess deaths in the beginning compared to COVID deaths. So essentially, testing got better over time, and that meant that more people who died with COVID or because of COVID got captured in the COVID death toll. If the U.S. had been overcounting COVID deaths by a large amount, what would you have expected to see on a chart like this? Well, if they were overcounting, then, then very simply, there wouldn't be that top blue area. So you can assess their claim that it's killing people who would have died anyway. And, and what you see is that now it's killing a, a vastly higher number of people. This is how we know that during these four years, around 1.3 million more people died in the U.S. than normal. Now, not all of those were COVID infections. We also saw increases in drug overdoses, in murders. People weren't being treated for other health conditions. But it was mostly COVID. And you can see that if you look at excess deaths by week instead of by year. There's a seasonal pattern in the expected baseline level of mortality because more people tend to die in the wintertime. And then when we add in the actual amount of deaths that happened, we see that the excess came in waves that align really closely with the reported COVID deaths. So this increases our confidence that we lost more than a million Americans to the virus. Then there's around 200,000 additional excess deaths that did not have COVID on the death certificate. And over on our Patreon, we'll dig into some recent research on those unexplained excess deaths. But I'll move on for now, because if you can estimate excess mortality for one country, couldn't you just do it for all of them? That's what The Economist and other groups have tried. And they all say that the global death toll is probably several times higher than the official count. But as you'll see in a second, when it comes to getting an exact global number, we're now venturing onto much shakier ground. You know, the WHO has this COVID-19 dashboard that lists death totals for pretty much every country. And I'm curious, where did that data come from? They collected from uh, reported deaths that uh, occur in hospitals or confirmed COVID deaths. But the world is actually quite poor at counting its dead. I had never thought about this before, so I was surprised to learn that they think 40% of deaths that happen globally are not registered. Some of the biggest countries in the world have limited capacity to certify their deaths because a lot of those deaths happen at home and in rural areas where families handle things themselves. So when a country doesn't have good data on COVID deaths, and they also don't have good data on total deaths, the other thing to try is to look at a sample of deaths. The Indian cell phone penetrance is quite high, but now 80% of the population has access to cell phone. And importantly, the response rates are actually quite good. Uh, unlike in the U.S., where most people, I mean, you, you're lucky if you get a 2 to 4% response rate to mm -hmm. a phone call. In India, for this particular survey, it was about 57%. Even in those so rural areas? Where even in the rural areas, yeah. 
And from that, the questions were pretty simple. Well, has there been a death in your house and when? And so these phone calls were going out throughout the pandemic. It's kind of a continuous. Yes. Well, credit goes to uh, Yashwant Desmu, who runs a, a very credible polling company called C Voter. And he made the decision during the pandemic to keep the polling operations going. And then we compared the uh, deaths by date. And that then leads to the estimate of three million or so deaths. So we think the Indian government has been underreporting COVID deaths by a factor of six or seven. That survey tells us a lot more about what happened in India, but we don't have that for all of the other countries. And so to get to these global estimates, the researchers turned to statistical modeling. For The Economist, that meant training a machine learning model to predict excess deaths based on the patterns in the countries where they were known. By the end of 2022, their model produced an estimate of 21 million global excess deaths, with a confidence interval from 16 million to 28 million. Um, can you explain what is the right way to interpret a confidence interval? We are about 95% confident that the true value is, is within this range, if our model is right. We're talking enormous ranges here, and some might say, well, like, what, what what's the point of that? So I think some information is way better than no information. Um, and sadly, what we've had for a long time and what a lot of people have relied on is information that's actually worse than no information because it is saying that, well, in the countries which can't afford to test or don't have good record keeping, there is no pandemic. I think that we have this idea that we know everything about the world and that like there's a problem when we don't and like there is a problem when we don't. But in yes. fact... Uh, we just don't, like, it's hard to know stuff. It's hard to know stuff. I mean, we're like, think about the challenge of this. There's, you know, 8 billion people in all sorts of circumstances all over this mm -hmm. planet. And in the U.S., the, the way that we kind of ensure people enter the system is that you actually need a death certificate to close people's accounts and to sort out their insurance and their inheritance and to, you know, even like get someone cremated. That is also fascinating. Like, the reason we have death data is because there are a bunch of systems that n need, like, in order to do the things that you need to do upon a, per a person's death, whether that's burial or cremation or bank account stuff, um, you actually do have to do the thing. The pandemic amplified so many of our existing inequalities. You could see it in who could afford to isolate, who was vulnerable, how the vaccines and treatments rolled out, but also this big inequality in paperwork, where countries that are rich in data can bring their public health problems into focus and see if interventions are working, while much of the rest of the world is a blur. Globally, it's a blur, which yeah. um, is not surprising, having some connection to how healthcare works globally, which is a big mess, and only gets better one day at a time through the efforts of lots of individual humans. There's more on Patreon. Yeah, you alluded to some of the like skepticism of these numbers, and it seems like a lot of that was political. And one that, that I heard a lot was that the doctors were greedy and they like somehow got more money if they said um, that someone died of COVID. I don't know how that would work or like what's the re real deal. 